morning. Good morning. Welcome to the Chamber Music Society of Lincoln Center. My name is Derek Balcom. I'm the Director of Education here at the Chamber Music Society. I'd like to welcome you to this morning's uh, master class with Anne-Marie McDermott. We're uh, thrilled to have Anne-Marie here with us. Anne-Marie's been a mainstay, as many of you know, I'm sure, at the Chamber Music Society for over 20 years now, and uh, is performing with us uh, next week on the uh, David Schifrin Celebration Concert, and of course, uh, throughout the season and on tour as well. So. Uh, in these master classes, you know, we're so happy to welcome in conservatory students from around the region. Uh, we actually have some uh, folks who traveled up from Philadelphia. It seems to always snow when we have people traveling from Philly. They're here this morning, as well as Juilliard and Manhattan School. And these master classes are, are a real important part of what we do here at the Chamber Music Society, as you know, we're getting these top students from the area conservatories who are the ones who are going to be the next generation of chamber music players. So with our current generation of players, such as Anne-Marie, we take this opportunity very seriously to help share the wisdom and knowledge that they've gained over their years of experience performing on our stages uh, with these students who uh, may be joining us in the years to come. So uh, without further, further ado, I'd like to welcome uh, Anne-Marie and our first group from the Curtis Institute. Where's the seat? Just in between this two. Got it. Don't mind if I sit here with you. Good morning. We're hearing the first movement, yes? Okay, great.
I heard somebody say wow, and I have to second that. Um, that was incredible. All three of you are really gorgeous musicians. Just what I love so much is you're really thinking musicians, you know, with this piece. And this is one of the, one of the most glorious piano trios, really one of the most challenging as well, to capture the right mood in this movement. It's marked allegro moderato, so it, it's, it's hard to find just the right tempo, and I have to say I completely loved your tempo. So I want to talk about some more subtle things um, with you that, that struck me, some ensemble things here and there. Um, this, you know, I was reading about this piece this morning and, and read something um, that I just found fascinating, which was when this piece was premiered, Beethoven played the piano part, and it was his last performance, was playing the premiere of this piece. That kind of gives you, if you think about that before you start playing this piece, it kind of, it's humbling, isn't it? <laughs> A little freaky, but humbling. All right, now, Stephen, you are, you are so gorgeous as a, as a player. I love your sound. It's just warm and fat and beautiful. What are you thinking before you start this movement? Because it's a hard opener. Don't worry, no answer is the wrong answer. <laughs> well, today I was a little bit scared. Okay, <laughs> sure. I'm well, expecting the, you know, how the piano yes. Play, how did the piano surprise you? Was it bigger than you were expecting, or...? Okay. Well, I wouldn't have known that you were scared, okay. so you camouflaged it really well. Um, but I find with this opening more than so many other uh, piano trios that I really have to have some idea in my head before I start it, because otherwise it is scary. You know, there's certain pieces as a pianist, like, like do you know, have you ever played the Schubert Fantasy? You know, where it starts, it opens like this. And it's supposed to be like so, so distant and, and, and far away, hardly any sound. You know, and I find when I'm starting, I'm like, Come on, softer. You know, so what helps is if you have something already going in your head. And this theme, it's almost, and you can disagree if you'd like, but it's almost like this theme's already going somewhere out there in the universe and you're just joining it. I, I view the, um, the, the last movement, the last Schubert piano sonata, the B-flat sonata, uh, what, what is this uh, that starts with this? because that can also be a very hard thing to start. And so I think before I'm playing, I'm thinking I'm already hearing it. And then so with this, already be hearing it and then just, just to calm yourself down. All right, one other comment about the beginning and I, I really loved it so much, so many elements of it. Just be careful that you don't, you know, pick a daisy every bar. You know what I mean? So it's, it's, I mean, I appreciate you just, you have, s you're filled with musicality and it's beautiful. Um, but within that context, then we have to choose, you know, if you have chocolate ice cream every single day of your life, it's not gonna be quite the treat as if you have it once a week, you know? So, so just to choose. So 
play this opening for me. Remember that you're doing a, it's a big long line, so don't forget your long line. Okay, good. Now, just for fun, play that same theme at the end of the movement, when it's double forte. Just to hear, how is it, uh, letter L. Oh, you don't have letters. Yeah, there. Okay, so quite different. Um, in this is just so grand at the end and it's so intimate at the beginning. This is a place, you know, as pianists, we're always getting yelled at to play softer. My whole life I've been yelled at. And <laughs> here, don't play softer. Really just the, the, the heck with them, they'll come through. <laughs> now, have, did you guys ever consider using doing this in one bow? Da -da 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 -da. I don't know, I have a thing, and I'm, I'm a piano player. I have a thing about bowings. I mean, but did, who have you coached this with? Ms. Kavafian and Mr. Wiley? Okay. And they supported this Boeing? Yeah, they <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll email them later and talk. No, I'm <laughs> <laughs> But it's just <laughs> when, when, and it's funny because I know uh, Ms. Kavafian, Ida Kavafian, you know, she has a real thing about Boeings too. It's just, you know, when there's a phrase marking, it's as if there's any way of doing the whole phrase in one bow, I find it can really contribute. All right, let's go back to the beginning and I want to point out some um, specific things. Now, these, let me sit for one minute. Uh, that's what I do. I, I understand you have my full sympathy for how hard that passage is. But to me, it sounded a little, a little bit, um, it needed a little more richness in the mordants, I found. Okay, okay. Um, now, um, let's see. Starting from here, this, this bar 43, um, I felt like it's, the, you know, largely the piano line doing... I didn't feel like the two of you were contributing enough to the musical line going on. I felt like you were, you were taking it for granted a little bit, what was going on there. So let's just try it right on. How about, uh, go two bars before, I always love when I do that, go two bars before 43, go at 41. <laughs> So is that your, your conception of the line is for it to be going where? Okay, good. Okay, good. What I missed was just the very beginning. You know, beginnings of things are so important. You know, beginnings and endings of things. Um, and I do want to talk to you about the ending. But somebody once said, just keep this in your minds when you're, when you're ending a movement. Somebody, a great conductor, said to me not too long ago, when uh, we were trying to figure out how to end a m movement. It was uh, Kershaw 503, Mozart Concerto. And he said, you know, let's end it with dignity. And I kind of, I loved that, and I've thought of that so often since then. If you think of that, it can somehow, somehow help. But what I was missing was hearing the voicing on, just at the beginning of pointing out, here is, you know, here is the line, I want you to be listening to this line. Mm -hmm. do, do that one more time, that same thing, 41. <laughs> Okay, good. Now, can it be softer? Still, I want to hear the line, but softer. Beautiful. Keep going.
Okay. I, Stephen, have to wonder. This it's dum bum ba dum bum bum ba dum bum bum bum. What you're doing is bum bum ba da dum bum ba da dum. Okay. So yeah, try it once more and with the with the correct phrasing. May I ask you, please, why you're doing this fingering? That's hard. No wonder you can't phrase it. He's going pinky pinky. You know, our pinky is a weak little creature and we have to be kind to it. Um, I do this. Try that. You have long fingers. You can do that. Okay. I'm still not here. Just do this. Again. Okay. Now connect it. Good. That's it. That's it. All right. Yeah, you really have to, with, with phrasing in Beethoven, I mean, you really have to um, do exactly what, you know, it's so interesting when over the years in playing chamber music, and I've, I've played this piece so many times, and in coming back to it, y we can get into certain habits when we're, when we're playing a piece of, of chamber music. I'm sure you, you all haven't played this, <laughs> you're far too young, but that essentially, you know, everything is in here. <laughs> so we, we have to just be, you know, this is our, our score from God, so to speak, and we have to really admire uh, or respect that entirely, and then, on top of it, speak with the music. Um, now, there are a couple of places where, um, let's see, I actually felt like the cello was too loud. <laughs> Can you imagine such a thing? Um, and Peter Wiley would not agree with me, all right? But that's all right, he's not here, and I am. Um, fair enough. Fair enough. <laughs> you can tell him. Here. It is, all right, just remember that the line is the piano line. Sure. All right, you're supporting the piano line there. Now, one other thing is you're playing this very different, you know, when you have uh, dum, that connection, be, and where you have it, where you have it here. Play, play once for me, just you, Stephen. Okay, good. So you're really thinking of this as part of this, right? Not, but this. So I felt like yours that, I mean, of course it's on a different instrument, but I felt like you can end, end that more okay. before doing it. Try, try it once so we can. So is the whole passage too soft or just starting here? No, the whole passage. Oh, wow. I just thought it was a little bit too soloistic. Okay. All right. Um, can, what bar would this be? Where are we? Da -da 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 -da. Yeah, so just go from bar, what bar number is that? 55. Go from 55. Good. All right, so you hear how he, all right, keep going for me. I, I'm sorry to stop you, keep going. Okay, I see what I'm hearing is D, D. I'm not hearing D, and that the top D is starting something new. Just play the Ds. Start right on the Ds yourself. Yeah, so uh, do that like two times in a row, just not the lower D, just do the top D. Da, 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 da. Good, do that again. Okay, now connect from the lower D. Good, good. You know, sometimes with, especially I find this in Beethoven, and I'm going to ask you to do this in a second to demonstrate the um, with these these pseudo dynamics and sometimes these pseudo phrase markings. What you really need to do is isolate it. And just like here, I want to hear you once. Just play this. Um, play this. Don't don't land here. Just stop at the end of this. I, I don't mean to put you on the spot, but I know you're up to it. Yeah, 
do it again. And I really admire your thirds. Those are really good. All right, now play this bar. Okay. Good. Now, now connect the two, go from the forte and keep going. Fantastic. Good. You know, when you have a sforzando piano coming up, plan for it. So in other words, come down. <laughs> Just like when you see crescendo, play softer, and when you see diminuendo, play louder. That's very, uh, that really is dumbing down, but that idea. All right, so I felt that right here. That you were coming up so much here that then this was losing its impact. All right, now, let's, you don't even have to try that. Again. Oh, you know what, let's continue for a minute, because I want to hear all of you then do this, the da 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 So how about... Yeah, just go on this, what bar is this? 68. 68. Beautiful. Okay, really good, except then when you get to the piano, then it's crescendoing too soon. You have a ways to go with that line. And I, I, so let's try once just on the piano bar. Play that how you would play it in your ideal way. That's gorgeous. Okay, so now the challenge is just connecting that so do the, can you do the triplet bar? Yeah, just by itself. Good, do it one more time. Good, because you know what happens to all of us because we're human? Is we anticipate. <laughs> and so that's one of the challenges of being a musician, right? You have to anticipate, but you can't anticipate. So one of those great, you know, conundrums. Um, all right, now let's connect it, do the trip. So in other words, don't, don't get all wimpy at the end. Uh, you're not, but don't get wimpy at the end of the triplet bar. Keep, it, keep up the, the uh, power. To my taste, that's not a poco retard, that's a molto retard. It's a hard spot, I know that, I have sympathy, but um, I, I feel like it, all it is doing, it, he's just taking a little bit of a, a breath, you know, before, before going on. Try it once, that was a nice, you have a little more time than you might think there. Don't worry, give yourself the time to get up there. Uh, just do the two, uh, what is this bar number? 80. Do 80. And try it, you know what, let's do this. Try it with absolutely no retard once. Good. So now just the tiniest, tiniest bit of retard. I think it's even, it's not, I wouldn't even call it retard, just the tiniest bit of hesitation. Do that one more time. Great, great, okay, let's stop for one second. Have you ever thought about, and I'll, this is in the development, have you ever thought about trilling with one three as opposed to two three? Maybe you, oh, that's cute, that's upside down. I meant, um, <laughs> yeah, I meant that. It may, and it might be weird for your hand. 
I do, I, I know, it's weird, but I do this because I find I can trill faster. That's pretty good. But maybe you, yeah. You know what? Stick to your fingering. It's good. <laughs> All right. Now, this is such a killer transition into the, the second ending and going forward. All right. Um, what I would like to hear, you know, pulse is everything. Without pulse, we don't breathe. So um, let's, I felt like it got lost in here, and I feel like it will retain its tension far more if you can hang on to the pulse. And it's just the transition going from the triplets to the 16th notes for some reason is tough. Can you, what is this bar, 91? Yeah. Not, go, go from 91, let's do this transition once. <laughs> Save it, save it. Okay, now let it out more. Good, good. I love that you're using two hands here. I love that. There are pianists fall into two camps as far as uh, whether you're ever allowed to allocate a voice that's in one hand to the other hand. And whether, you know, the musical gods up there are going to condemn us if we put a line that's written, that's scored in the treble in the right hand, and we use our left hand um, as well. And I advocate it because I, whatever it takes to get the effect. I remember, let me sit down for one minute. This is uh, similar and not similar, but I remember once playing for John Browning years ago, and I was playing this for Kofi of uh, Sarcasms. And the first movement is marked quadruple forte, marcatissimo, pesante, accents on every note, and it's mar marked feroce. Okay, <laughs> so I'm playing it for John, and I'm doing this. <laughs> and he just kept, he was not happy, over and over, no, more, 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 more. Finally, I was just getting so annoyed that I just played it, and I went <laughs> And that's more what he was looking, but look what I, look how I played it. I went like this. You know, now that's not a typical fingering, you see. <laughs> but, you know, whatever it takes. Um, all right, let's just, I want to go uh, to the development. Okay, one thing for you, Stephen, idea. You have uh, unison triplets. <laughs> that you know what's a really great idea? Voice them. Voice the top, the right hand to the top voice, the left hand to the lower voice. <laughs> yeah. It's cool, isn't it? It's yeah. Great. It doesn't it use like both sides of your brain. Like one side of your brain is going to the voicing the right hand, the other it's piano playing is really hard. Um now, all right. What okay. This whole middle section it wasn't soft enough. All right, you know, there are, I discovered something recently in, um, with the piano, and don't let this keep you awake at night. With the, p with the piano, uh, Yamaha has done some studies so that uh, in creating their disc clavier to make it as precise as possible for recording. The pedal, do you want to guess how many gradations of the pedal are available to us? <laughs> what would you think? Just guess. Gradations, depths of the pedal, how far you can push it down. 30, okay. Then 256. <laughs> Isn't that humbling? Um, so, and I, I think, I, I, you know, as far as sound, for any of us instrumentalists, right, we can never do enough um, uh, contrast with, with our sound and with our colors. There's, it, it's never enough. And I mean, I've been at this uh, uh, decades playing the piano and I'm constantly discovering new colors in the piano, new uh, gradations of, of color and sound and, you know, so when uh, it's marked pianissimo, I know, I, I again, I know how hard these trills are, but um, you know what I do, by the way? Let me show you something. 
talking about jokes. And the, you know, because it can be, right? <laughs> so, uh, then, so what, you know, again, it's like uh, that concept of whatever it takes. Try that one, see if, how that feels. Wow, you're quick. How does, that see, how does that feel to you to do that? Yeah, I just have to get used to it. Yeah, I know you have to get used to it. If it's not, okay, it's just an idea for you that I've found helpful. The, the thing with, you know, again, we're all right-handed or left-handed. So um, with the piano, Sometimes, and it's something so exposed in pianissimo like this. Okay, um, you have to, um, it's very hard to, you, the right hand will trill just great, and the left hand, it's like you're going, please, come on, give me a good trill, and it doesn't. All right, one other thing for you, going back into the recap, which voice do you care about more, the top or the bottom? I think, in my opinion, I think you need to care more about the left hand so that you're all together. So uh, the reason I ask you that is I think if you don't choose to care about one over the other, it's going to be a little bit of a, uh, of a you know, mystery of what's going to come out. You know what I mean? Just, just decide, to just choose. All right, now where was this place where the string players cut you off? And I wasn't happy about it. Um, <laughs> you have to always listen to your piano player. All right. That was, that was just a mistake, right? Yeah. Oh, so I've done the same thing. You get to the end of the movement and you just, and the line is going up, 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 and then all of a sudden he scores it down an octave and I found myself in performance. Oh wait, I'm supposed to be down the octave. Um, I want you to end this movement once more for me and this was really good, by the way. All right, I want to hear you absolutely soar like you're a full orchestra here yourself, all right? And I wanna, I wasn't completely convinced of your ending, think, dignified but also think big and fat and rich and that it that it has a, a finality to it so let's go on the double forte where the piano has the glorious theme That was great, fantastic. <laughs> you're wonderful, really. What amazing way to start the day. You're all really gorgeous musicians. Thank you for schlepping from Philly. And really great to hear you. All right, thank you. Thanks, Shannon. Thanks, John. Okay, thank you, thanks. just hearing some of the light repertoire of the piano trio repertoire today, huh? <laughs> God, Archduke, Schubert, B-flat, and Mendelssohn, D-minor, wow. <laughs> so next up, as you see, we're going to have, does anybody have any, uh, since we're waiting for the next group to come, anybody have any thoughts or comments or questions or um, was everything I said, did it seem to make sense? Okay. <laughs> yeah. No because I spent more time with the pianist? I know you are. Um, <laughs> no, the, the, the thing that Beethoven was so brilliant at was creating these piano trios where all three instruments are equally as important. The Mozart piano trios, for sure the cello part is not. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> for, for sure, in the Mozart piano trios, the cello part is not.
But in the Beethoven piano trios, everybody is equally important. The piano has more to do. Fantastic. Okay, thank you. You have the first two. All right, you know what? Let's, let's see. Let's start with the first movement and see where we're at. All right, and then yeah, see if we have time. Okay, thank you. Now, why were you asking?
fantastic. That was filled with great spirit and energy and enthusiasm, and I loved it. It was really, really great. So it's not an easy piece, not an easy movement. But you all, you interact so beautifully. A couple of times, they didn't feel the two of you were listening to her, <laughs> and I'll point out where. And there I would like, I'm going to show you a, a, a little secret, by the way, in the piano part that I've discovered to help. Um, but there, this, it, you know, is such a classical form and such, it's, Schubert's very uh, difficult. What I felt overall that was lacking was the softer side of things. That a lot of it was very, and, and again, I so, I'd rather any day hear playing like this where it's just beaming with, with love and enthusiasm and, um, but um, I, there are many places in the movement where I would love to be hearing a lot more of a distant sound. And I want to be hearing more of a difference between forte and fortissimo because there aren't actually that many moments that are fortissimo. You know, and so if you really can save those moments, the fortissimos for when they're really marked, it, has a hu it makes a huge difference. You know, because otherwise it can, the nature of the writing, it can, um, it can, it can be, w there's always this fine line with playing that it always has to be about, and I'm not, I'm just saying this as a broad statement. It always, we have to make sure it's always about the music and try and remove ourselves from it even though we're playing. <laughs> and so that it's, it's, never, it's never about us, it's about the music. You know, to the best of our ability, and I know that sounds like some crazy statement, but um, as, as you go through the years as a musician, you discover more and more and more how humbling it is to be a musician and how much, how much we don't know how much, with all the effort we put into what we do, how much work there's still to be done. You know what I mean? It's never, it's never ending, which is a great thing, um, but it's a humbling thing. <laughs> now, first, before I forget my little trick, I can't believe I'm going to give away one of my tricks, but I'm going to. <laughs> and you're going to love me for it. Okay, this whole development. All right. Now, there's nothing I can do to help you here, you know. Uh, but when you get here, watch this. Isn't that great? OK. Sorry, we, we have our own language here. <laughs> what I'm doing, it's written. I'll, I'll uh, try and do it demonstrably. Uh, it, it. So your left hand is always having to do this arpeggio and then jump down and try and get to the low F. So it kind of, it's a long distance to have to go. So what I'm doing is I'm taking the final note of this left hand triplet, I'm taking it with the right hand. You'd never know. Uh, so it just gives you that extra second to shoot your hand. How much do you love me now? <laughs> try. She's not even going to try it. She's just marking it right in there. That's when you know you have a good idea. Now, sometimes you weren't taking enough advantage of the pedal. All right, sometimes I thought it was a little bit dry. Okay. All right, let's do this opening, and um, I'll, ch well, I'll ch give you specific places that I'm referring to as far as dynamically, all right? Okay, fantastic. <laughs> Listen to her. Okay. You weren't with her. Whatever she wants to do, she should be able to do, and your job is to listen to her and be with her, okay. whatever it takes. That was so good. And what was really nice, what I love to hear in this opening is the musical line. So, it, you know, the B flat being nice, long, and fat, and then going up to the F, and that being, so, you know, sometimes these, um, in fact, there's one place I want to ask you about right away, about the length of your note, and I know it's such a hard spot. Do you guys have bar numbers? Yes. All right, go to bar 133. I know, right? <laughs> yeah. I mean, it was really, it was really good. I was wishing, because the, again, the level of your playing is so high. Uh, you know, I really am nitpicking here. That I was hoping it could just be a little bit longer. Yeah. You know, and I know it's really, it's such a, it's such a hard spot. 
Um, but all right, do the, do the opening one more time for me. How come it's still not? Just go, I'm sorry, bar five, it's still not together. No, from bar five. Okay, good. Hey, now don't be afraid of that top F major chord. Play it. I know, I know. That's the conundrums of being a pianist in an ensemble. You have to be together with all the string players. You have to not be too loud, but you have to be loud enough. You ha I know. I can't give you a good answer. I just keep trying. <laughs> Good. All right, now, right here. Yes, good. You have darker color. One way to help yourself. Da -da 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 Just a little dab on the pedal will help you because sometimes, you know, the piano, it can be so secco without any pedal. You know? So, and this will just. Da -da 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 and maybe a slightly longer stroke with the chord. Do bar five one more time. But don't, don't compromise the rests. Whatever you do, respect the rests. That's a mouthful. Just go right on the C minor. Okay, now starting from bar 10, this is one of the places, all right? I, you, you went down to a nice piano, but then you came right back up again. All right, that's the hard part. <laughs> it's just to do once more on the on the C minor. Good. Beautiful. Okay, all right, let's, for one thing for you, another real cool trick for you. <laughs> Love those things. It took me years to discover them, so I like to pass them on. Now, starting bar 18, you, you need to help them more because it's very hard with a chromatic line for the, for the crescendo to be happening. Keep in mind, it's, you know, we don't want it to get too, 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 too loud. So you probably just have to start a little bit softer here, okay. all right, so that it really is growing to there. Now, for some reason here, you're slowing way down, all right? If you can avoid doing that so that you're going to give yourself space here. Mm -hmm. Let me tell you one other thing before you play this yeah. connective four bars. Mm -hmm. As a piano player, and don't think I'm crazy. I am a little bit, but it's all right. <laughs> that if you want to play super, super soft mm -hmm. on the piano, envision, and this sounds really crazy, Envision that you have no bones in your hand. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and somehow it just makes your hand limp enough where, I'm at, at least for me, if I envision that in my head, it helps me to play even softer. Mm -hmm. You know, because it can, you know, the, the gradations again of soft color are, are enormous. So let's go right on this bar, okay. bar 18. Okay, so th that I, I, I appreciate your trying to do it. Now you overcompensate it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's okay. <laughs> go on the uh, go on bar twenty. Pedal, pedal. Use some pedal. Help yourself. That was absolutely gorgeous till the very end. I like to think of this like melting into the theme. I, I, it says you, you wrote no retard, but don't make it, don't, um, 
I feel like that's, that's too much of a, a statement. It can relax. Yeah. It, did somebody tell you you can't, you can't relax there? Okay, I think, I mean, it's really, you're going through this whole journey of four bars. I'm sorry. So, you know, and I'm sorry, I'm ignoring you. I didn't mean to. You see, she catches me every time. So, I think it just needs a little bit of finessing into the, into, and then when you have the theme, they're not, they're so soft, you can really be soft. All right? So try just on the bottom of your chromatic scale. Beautiful. Good. Good. Okay, now, this spot, I think, is not a good, a good time to take time. Okay. Because then she has to come in, you know, it's going to make her life harder if you take time there. <laughs> All right? So just do the last, uh, the, the, the last two bars of your, what bar is that? Sorry. Yeah. Okay, good. Now, throughout the movement, and it's much harder on the piano than the strings, these dum ba bum bum ba bum sometimes, don't take this the wrong way, but sometimes they sound a little bit lazy. Okay. They sound like y y they need to have, y like, when you, you play for me just when you have, like, a dum ba bum bum ba bum You know, like here. Yep. Yeah. You see, so that sounds, it, it just is nice and crisp. Try yours. Good, that's it, that's it. All right, so just, I wanted to hear that throughout the movement. All right, let's do a skip a little bit to, okay, I want to get into this cello solo because, again, this is one of those, I'd like bar 54. I really, you know, it's, it, you are, Coming from what you're coming from, you have two bars to, to bring us to an entirely new world of sound. Mm -hmm. But no pressure, really. <laughs> um, so, <laughs> so go try 54, everybody. All right, you know what? Help yourself. Again, if you have to dim, start more. Okay. All right, so start a little bit more here. And you guys maybe don't dim to pianissimo, okay. right? <laughs> Help her. <laughs> okay, st uh, do the second, the right hand uh, chromatic scale, and just the biggest dim you've ever done in your life. Okay. Yes, good, good. So, okay, along, never stop. Um, Never accept that, that your, your pianissimo is soft enough. Don't always keep trying to, to find new ways to make it softer. Okay. All right, so do that, do the whole chromatic scale, so two bars before the cello solo. Good. Gorgeous. This is pianissimo. And she's trying to play pianissimo. Do it again. Do it from, she set it up so gorgeously. Uh, do from your long A, and then just really soft. It's beautiful. Shh, come back down. Yes. With pianissimo, pianissimo, it's too loud. Everybody's too loud. You see how much 
more impactful it is with the line if you really keep it, and it's hard to keep it down, I know that, mm -hmm. but, y but you have to. And if you really keep it down, then when it just opens up into this forte, it's absolutely gorgeous mm -hmm. and, and magical. If otherwise, it just sounds, it just sounds um, ordinary. You know what I mean? And we never want anything we do to sound ordinary. Mm -hmm. Extraordinary is what we're trying to go for. How are you guys doing your da da dums? What are you thinking about that mark? In other words, that marking of the. No, these guys. Oh, those. Okay. Uh, in general, throughout the movement, you're trying to apply the control of the action, but it's like you're just using the notes higher. Yeah. Okay. Yes, nice, 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 nice. I just wondered if you might want to insert on the, time, on the high note mm -hmm. a little bit more vibrato, vibrato, just so that it's a little more tender, yeah. you know, because they're, they're rather pleading and begging and they're, they're beautiful, right? And just to capture that, because I, I love your approach to those accents, but I, I'm just missing a little of that tenderness. Okay. All right, so try once on this piano solo right here where you have that. All right, this was all really good. All right, now jump ahead for me because this is a place 100 um, where I know there's a swell, but can you keep it all within pianissimo? Yeah. That's way too loud, way too loud. Just go where the piano comes in. 102. You know, sometimes in the context of a beautiful piece and a very musical performance, it's okay for a couple of bars to be completely unmusical. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Uh, honestly. Mm -hmm. And so for something to just be without us inflicting anything on it whatsoever, just let it be. D you don't want to do that all the time. But, you know, in, in context, it can be a really good idea. Now, the development. This is a place um, I felt like you needed to use more pedal. It sounded too much, um, uh, like it sounded too motoric, okay. like a motor. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I mean, it's, it's written that way. The guy, you know. Okay. So. <laughs> oh, that was gross. Really focus on the left hand, voicing everything to the left hand. This can be much lighter. Then, what are you guys thinking about this development, starting in 120, about your, your direction? Mm -hmm. We're trying like, to stay in the, and not to do too much, like. Up and down, nauseating and stuff, like yeah. Like to do like, like something like same, same. Nice. Giotto, same. That's really nice. Yeah, and it's quite orchestral here. I feel like just you could do the tiniest subtle drop somewhere. Let's see here. I mean, there's many choices. Maybe, you know, the bar of 132 could be a place. And then, by the way, yeah. OK. Um, you know, something like that, it, because it just sounded, it sounded pretty blasty, you know. Um, and because uh, I, I love that approach, to it. it's, it's regal, it's grand, it's orchestral, all of that. Try it once, just on, on the double forte on 120. That's great. Now, 
Beautiful. Good, good, good. That's the idea. Good, good, good. Now, the spot just starting, I was running out of time. The st st starting at 155, this whole section, I felt like, again, that, that the sound opened up too soon. That if you can save it longer, it's just more magical. It just keeps the tension a little bit longer, and it should just, I mean, it should be so... That's another thing when I'm trying to play something very, very soft. What I think very often is I'll envision that the sound is like way off in the distance. And somehow if I imagine that in my head, my hands will do it. Mm -hmm. You know, it's so important when we're playing to uh, really think about the sounds we want before we produce them. Um, it's been a revelation to me how, how much impact that can have on our sound, is just having a thought here. If you don't have the thought here, you're taking a chance. If you can really picture what sound you want before you play it, it will, ha you know, our hands are here to serve us, hopefully, you know. So try this once just on this spot and as magical, ethereal, floaty a sound as you can could get here. <laughs> nice. You guys are good. That was inc wasn't that amazing? That was absolute. Could not have been paced any better. That was absolutely gorgeous. Um, really, it's in that. It's amazing how just. Yeah, yeah. You just wow. That was so good. <laughs> hey, good job on these. Uh, they're hard, right? Yeah. Hey, and whatever you do when you get to the G flat major, are you thinking at, at 187? Are you thinking any? What are you thinking there? I'm thinking there's some production there. Good. Perfect. Perfect. So I thought you could help. I com couldn't agree more. You could help with that. It's it's kind of it's a little bit funny, you know that where, where he just I mean for him to be going up just like up this half step <laughs> to go from here. is kind of silly a little bit, but <laughs> but it's like that fine line of it's silly, but it's still Schubert. So. <laughs> Now, same thing, by the way, at 285, really keep that swell within pianissimo. Yeah. All right. Um, these, don't be that kind to the string players here in the coda. You know what I mean? <laughs> Challenge them to, you know what I mean? Because th let's face it, the piano part's the most important, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just kidding. And then what I love this effect, just think about it, of after the, after the fermata at 307, um, of really suspending time here. Play it with me once, so. And then, and then, get, and then get strict about your tempo here. One, da -da -da -da. In fact, what would be better for us to do would be suspend time a little. And then move. And then nothing, here's a place, don't be so musical. <laughs> yeah, so it kind of just goes, goes away and then, <laughs> then you have these. You guys are absolutely wonderful. Thank you so much, wish we had more time. Thank you, gorgeous, gorgeous. Thank you, wonderful playing. Beautiful, beautiful, nice, no problem. Okay, thank you. No, you know, he put some, thank you. Thank you, good idea. All right, now, any comments, thoughts, questions? No. It sounded like, the, uh, yeah, it does a little bit, right? Yeah, it has that Schubert thing going on. Schubert is so deceptively difficult because you want to retain that, that purity and that classicism, um, and, but it's, it's not comfortably written for the piano. You know, there I go talking about the piano again. So, <laughs> I should. 
Um, yeah. <laughs> Absolutely, I do. Yeah, the piano, I mean, the piano is kind of the underlying force, pulse, tapestry that the other strings exist upon. So the piano part in, in any chamber music is really critically, critically important. Voicing, how you voice so other instruments can come through, pedaling so the other instruments can come through. Yeah, good morning. Hi. Hi. So you're doing Mendelssohn D minor. Yeah. Got it. First movement? Yeah. Fantastic.
fantastic. God, great part, great playing on all three of your parts. Beautiful coda. That's nice. That was great. Now, don't get mad at me for, for one comment I'm going to make, the first comment I'm going to make, which is, this is Mendelssohn Marx, this molto allegro and agitato. I could hear it being a little more of that agitato. It sounds uh, it's, and a little faster. Sorry to say that, because I know it's 10 quadrillion notes in the piano part, <laughs> but you sound great on it, and I think, I think you could do it. Um, and just so that it, it has, it's never, you know, it always has that, that agitato, so that when you have, let me sit for one minute, when you have then the second theme, it'll be a, a greater, this, you know, that that's a beautiful contrast to play some of the opening with me. <laughs> sorry, I beat you, sorry, sorry, sorry. I was pushing, and then here, can, you know, there's a very, in the Mendelssohn piano trios, there's always a great contrast between the more horizontal passages mm -hmm. and the more vertical ones where you need to just hunker down and, and have a, you know, so here, to this, you don't want this to have an agitato feeling. This, you know, and so then at the end, here you want that. Here, you, do you know what I mean by that? So, so that you have these, long, like here, this, this, is definitely horizontal. The phrase just keeps going. So, you know, be careful that it's not this. You know? It just... It's still going, right? So, now, a couple of ideas for you here in the piano part. You played the piano part great. Just a couple of things that maybe can help, help it have a little bit more pizzazz, which is just shaping things. So like this. Just really go for the top. You know, th there, and then like a spot like, um, these you're doing great. I would love if they just had a little more of that agitato. Sorry, I haven't played it for a while, but these here, dum -dum -dum -dum, really go to the top. That you know, that's what gives it that kind of extra um, sizzle. Place like here, what I really try and do, and I was watching you physically when you were doing this, you could help yourself by using your arm a little bit more. So I'm just. So what I was hearing was really good, it was, but it didn't, it, for some reason, it wasn't as impactful, and I was trying to figure out why. And I think it was because, whoops. All the notes were happening, but it didn't have. So it's, I, I know it sounds like a pig, but that, that idea where it's all, all of these running notes have this great swirling en energy underneath them, all right? So. With that in mind, try this opening just one more time and, you know, of just thinking by, I mean, it was very beautiful. So I hated to even mention the tempo thing, but it just didn't, I didn't feel like it was capturing quite that magic of, of that agitato. Now, one other thing, by the way, she's being good to you over here. So don't feel the need that you need to play out too much. Keep the mystery. It's beautiful. Good, good, good. Sing it out. Here, yeah, just, you know, I, I just, I wanted to make sure you were feeling that arrival yeah. of getting there, but you seemed, I think you were feeling that arrival. 
Uh, <laughs> that was beautiful. Um, hold back on the crescendo, you know, as long as you can, always. And in fact, while I'm thinking of it, there was a place I really wanted you to hold back on the crescendo. You know what I didn't hear enough of, and, it, and it's interesting, and I know this is a very vibrant room to play in, um, but I've been hearing this today during this whole master class of uh, not enough of the middle range dynamics. What I'm hearing is I'll hear, I'll hear the soft, I'll hear the real loud, but there's a million dynamics in the middle that a million might be exaggerating, but there's a lot. <laughs> and <laughs> so um, just always keep, you know, mezzo piano is just as important as pianissimo and mezzo forte is as important as double forte, you know. Um, all right, where I wanted the, okay. Uh, do you have letters? Do you have letter Q? Okay, so uh, way at the end of the movement here. All right. Okay. Here, by the way, this is one place I think you can use more pedal. Yeah, and I don't think you need to, you can just, you don't need to be pedaling on every single beat. You're, you're allowed here to finally put the pedal down. Um, so, but in here, in this section starting in, uh, when the piano starts at 529, when you guys have these da dum da dum, they sounded a little vicious. <laughs> <laughs> and so I'm wondering if they can just be a little more dignified, contribute, like they should just be blending in with the piano part there. They should not be saying, oh, look at us. You know what I mean? And I wanted to make sure that the most glorious moment, or at least I think the most, and you can disagree with me and that's fine, um, the most glorious moment is when the theme comes in major mm -hmm. at the end of this. It's just we should all have goosebumps when it arrives at that, at that moment. And for some reason it was so powerful and passionate before that moment that the impact was taken away from it. So, you know, you ha again, you have to always pick, pick your spots. Let us try this once from bar, I know I jumped right to the end of the movement, but from bar 529, let's, uh, no, this here. Oh yeah, you know what, that's better, yeah, 527. Good, good. You guys were great. Let me show you a little trick I do here. Come down a little bit, but mask it. You know, by the way, they go da da. Do your D minor statement, the double forte. What I was doing that more than you is, y here's a spot, they do the statement then, <laughs> you take it over with great authority. Then here, what I do is I kind of come down a little bit here, then <laughs> and, then, and then to just let the sound open up to, to when they have that statement. Here, really push them, you know, <laughs> you know, so, um, very often the piano, somebody just asked me this, but it's, it's really true, the importance of the piano part. We have the power um, to, no, we really do, to be able to incite reaction from the string players or in a piano trio, from the string players we're working with to really you know, push it up to another level. Whether they want to ever acknowledge that or not is their problem, <laughs> okay? <laughs> but we do have that power. So. You know, another spot where I felt that very much was, and it's a tiny little thing, but it's not. Uh, where is this? Where you're, you join, I am going to find this spot. You, no, it's here, it's after this. Oh, here, all right, so this is very conversational, so then at here. Here. 
here, it's violin and piano right here. Here, you're the only one with moving parts. Mm -hmm. You know, so I feel like that you can fill in that space more, more uh, tenderly somehow with this. One other place where I felt you could use a little bit more pedal, okay? Because I, 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 I agree with your choices of not using much pedal and all the finger work. It's great, really good. Um, is here when this takes over. So we have. Seco here is a really cool effect under their legato line. You know, and then the same thing when they finish, then you take over here. With more pedal. You know, let's try that, this a little bit of this of this middle section. Um, again, you know what? Is if as intimate as you can make this theme when you have it here with the piano doing you know you have nothing that you need to compete with for sound you're s and so i think it's a more it's a little more of an internal statement of the theme this time how about you do your theme here for us you'll know where she is and think super long line with this theme that you have in the piano Everybody, keep it down. Don't rush here, it's hard for the piano. really float softer softer great all right right here can you start this phrase in the cello with the awareness of where you need to get to so in other words, needs to be more tension, you know, that, oh, now this is going to be a real super long statement of this theme to bring us to where, to, to the recap. All right, so it, it, seemed, it seemed a little too out there already. I think it should be, now, before we go on, then when you come to all, this is so hard, isn't it? Then when you come to the bottom here, do -do, do -do, you took like an eight bar retard, and there's actually nothing even marked. So, I mean, I, I understand wanting to take a retard, but can you just wait till the end? <laughs> <laughs> and you are missing a great opportunity with that A. And then when the A opens up, it moves to the G. You, why are you changing strings? Why can't you do the A on the A string? Could you? Yeah. Could you try it for me? And then when, when, I mean, that's the most expressive line, I think, is that you're, you're holding the A, everything gets suspended, because you're not going to retard too much before it. And then you just hang on to that A, and then the two of you come in, and then when you move to the G, it's like, oh, it's gorgeous. All right, so let's try the pick up to this place where you're going to keep the long line in mind. Mm -hmm. Good. No, but you know, so you have, I'm sorry, y y this was sounding great. By the way, you were brilliant here. You picked up on that so quick. Here, so you have. <laughs> play it like you mean it. You know, when it's repeated, the same phrase, when it's repeated, and then he actually puts the, the, the dim there, it kind of, I felt a little bit like you took it for granted. That you're very important there because you're setting up the piano line. 
that ha so it's all about the piano again, but no. So <laughs> Carol, how about just go from, what bar is that? Uh, 44th. 44th, yeah. That was really good, by the way, the cello line started, that was excellent. <laughs> Okay, keep the tempo. Get softer and softer and softer. Uh, sorry, I'm telling you, sorry. So keep the tempo, keep the diminuendo going so that it's just going, it's just vanishing because you have the most magical moment of the whole movement coming up. So just set yourselves up. This was absolutely fantastic. Jeez. Can you do just like the final two bars? So she's going to go hopefully at 358. <laughs> Okay, one idea on top of the idea, I, I loved that, having that there. How about starting with no vibrato? Having it just kind of flatlined for a minute of just this pure A ringing out. You guys maybe wait the tiniest second longer to come in and just let this A hang out there. Then when they come in, just before you're going to, you know, at the end of your A, then just all of a sudden warm it up with vibrato. I think it could be gorgeous. Do just whatever. Will you do your first da da Okay, you, I appreciate very much that you heard what I said, but that was too long. <laughs> I was like watching her bow go and go and go and go. And I'm like, <laughs> thinking she's probably not really happy at this moment. And do it, do it one more time. <laughs> but with that idea in mind of just that suspension. Keep it down, keep it down. Still keep it down. Now open it up more. Good, good. So just hang on to the intimacy you created with that. Don't let it suddenly come out. You know what I mean? Those are some of the greatest moments in, in music when you can, um, and, and we have such, uh, we're so lucky to do what we do because we have everybody here with their ears listening to this, and we're able to create this, this magic with how we're shaping something and with when, when there's a, a moment that's just so intimate and pure that of hanging on to it longer than you, may, you might even think. And, and it, it's just, you know, always relish those, those opportunities when, when you can do that. And, you know, we're very lucky um, to have that. Now, Coming up, I want to go with the tempo one. This was beautiful how you played this. And I just, I felt this in the exposition and then again here, this passage here seemed a little bit um, aggressive as opposed to legato and supportive of <laughs> her. <laughs> so go from here. <laughs> You know what's fun to do, by the way, sometime with this transitional four bars? Don't take any time and do, do the mood change all with your color. You know what I mean? And I, I, I know that's hard, but it's, it's pretty, it can be really gorgeous to not be predictable.
You know what's important here? Here, so d- that left hand, we need that to matter more because that's setting up what's coming after it. If you just go, you know, it, it, then, then it's like, w- what's happening here for a second? You know, it's like <coughs> every single, you know, and I learn this more and more as I get older, every single note in music, every single one matters. Who is it? Uh, I think it was Pablo Casals. He said, and this is enough to keep you awake at night. He said, no two notes in music should be the same dynamic. Mm-hmm. Oof, that's hard <laughs> if you think about it. But, but yet it's true. I mean, it's, it's just like if we, when we speak and, and how, you know, it's very rare that we'll speak two words at the same exact dynamic. It's always coming, going, up and down. Every, you know what I mean? And it's, it's when you apply that to, to music, um, and I don't mean that it should become overly fussy at all, but I mean that if you haven't ingested every note of the score, if you haven't thought about it, every single note and every single phrase, it's going to sound like it. It's going to sound like you're missing. What is it that's missing? You know, and what what's is is that you're constantly the entire time creating a story, creating a conversation, you know, creating the music. I mean, that's really our job. We're not, we're not really the creators. We're the recreators of the music since we didn't write the music. Um, but, you know, and, it, and it's a wonderful job to have of really, okay, really focusing um, on, and I'm not saying you didn't do that, by the way. I'm just speaking all high, high and mighty here because I'm not the one playing. <laughs> so, <laughs> now, the end of this movement, whatever tempo you're doing, the rest of the movement. Um, oh, that's interesting. You wrote hold tempo. Why? To hold the tempo? Oh. Oh. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. But for some reason, you know, he does put on imato again. So. I, if I hadn't read what you wrote there, um, is your coach here? No, sorry. (laughs) Just kidding. Um, I would say I like for the coda of this movement to just kick it up a notch. And I think that's why he put the animato there. Um, I agree with you. It's nice if it can even kick up a notch even more here. And then, by the way, are you all thinking, what are you thinking starting at 6.04 till the end? about the tempo. Are you thinking that's continuing to animato or not? No, pretty much the last point. It It tops out. I agree. I agree. I think that then, because this is just the final statement of the theme, I think that's a great idea to just then have it be stable so the piano player doesn't want to murder you. Um, So, um, all right, I think that's, that pretty much covers it. It's beautiful. I wish I could hear more of the piece. So, thank you for playing today. It's gorgeous. (laughs) Thank you. Wasn't it? It's unbelievable. My God.